What the heck? All right, I'll just do an audio check. Uh, so my mic is good. Uh, Shin, can you say something real quick? Yes, mic check one two one two. All right, you, you're live, Dave. Microphone check one two. What is this? Uh, okay, he looks like we're good. Yeah, they're doing doing this raw. What? Oh, hold on. Oh, wow. uh, hold on, the man. The, uh, the, oh, what's the juggernaut? I like your raincoat. The juggernaut's here with free play mode and geeking out official. Let's get this thing started. You know, now it has been a long time since I hosted one of these. It feels good to get, you know, my high school friends together for this. So, you know, I'm going to go around the, the, you know, the panel for introductions. So, free play mode, what have you been up to? Uh, too much work. But part of my work allows me to listen to this craziness that has been going on with Microsoft. Yeah, this. See, so the, yeah. the the circus that is uh this, this hearing, but all right. Well, hey, it, it we'll see what happens, and you know what? I see Shinwar every day, but you know, I'm gonna give him the floor and uh to plug geeking out official. My man, what's going on? What's going on? Not much, just uh working, gaming, working, gaming. Working game. I was gonna okay. I was gonna say something, but I'm gonna leave that alone because working sounds like something else. I'm following up on this, uh, the whole FTC hearing and all this stuff. So, I'm looking forward to seeing what we're gonna discuss today. Alrighty, so, and obviously, you know me, Mr. Juggernaut, been out of the game for a minute, but I'm trying to slowly. Uh, get back into the groove. So for those of you who were watching my uh, solo video uh, uh, a few days ago, I appreciate y'all for that. Shout out to Black Dragon who uh, jumped in on that stream. But without further ado, all right, so this particular show is just a main, mainly a g general summary, overview, highlights of a couple of things that went down with this FTC versus Microsoft uh, merger <laughs> uh, uh, blocking or, you know, acquisition hindrance. So, with that being said, um, generally, we already know that the FTC, CMA, and Sony are not in favor of Activision, Blizzard, King being acquired by Microsoft. So, with that being said, you know, a lot of ugly truths and you know behind the scenes it's like the curtain was pulled back and you see some of the unsavory unhanded underhanded things that occur and you know now you're in a space where you know when i looked at pretty much everything i wouldn't say i'm super passionate about what was going on but i, I told shinwar this uh, um uh, earlier this week and in 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 the past you know, when it comes down to companies' viability and trying to survive and for the consumer, exclusives have become a practice where it's just like, you know, people profit and then predicated on being the best, right? At the expense of removing choice. And for the first time, you're seeing, you know, light at the end of the tunnel for this deal. But overall, you know, it, this this was rather interesting to say the least. We finally came up on day five. We should be getting some sort of response or result uh, either, I believe, Wednesday of next week or the latest July 15th. But giving the floor to Demizel to start and then Shinwar. Dave, what were you, what were your thoughts and some key highlights and takeaways from just an overall? And remember, we're doing overall, not being too specific on things, but anything highly relevant that can, you know, you want to highlight. My, my takeaway from this is like when in day like three and four is when the judge finally started to get it. Mm hmm. And what I mean by that is, like, she started asking questions of the FTC that would effectively poke holes in their argument for 
anti-competitiveness and harm to the consumer because even the judge mentioned that like Sony is guilty of the practices that they're accusing Microsoft of going to perpetuate if this deal goes through. Uh huh. Yeah, you took so, one of my notes there. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> so it's like when the judge starts to get it and when the judge starts to poke holes in your argument, that means it's really not going well for you. And, and let's not limit this to Sony like being the main perpetuator of this pain for uh, games not to appear on other consoles because this is a practice that goes as far back to the Nintendo versus Sega. Sega. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they would literally tell companies like, hey, if you put stuff on our console, you can't put it on the Master System. Not you can't put the same game on our system. You can't put other games on a rival console, period. So now, just... now, Dave, can I interject with that? Do you remember some of the examples? I was telling Shinwar this. You do know that Nintendo, with the Final Fight series, you have Final Fight 1 that you could put on other platforms, but Final Fight 2 and 3 have been locked down to the SNES ever since. And I was too young to understand what was going on. And remember the breadcrumbing with Sega CD and Final Fight CD where they had to do a semi-enhanced version that the assets were given to Sega to make that version of the game. You know what I mean? Like, I did not understand that because I was a kid. I, did, I didn't understand. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Da, 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 you know? But then when you see Nintendo doing what was... Nintendo was doing it all along. Like the games like Super Castlevania, that they, there was something that I saw. I don't know if it was Roofermonger or uh, Top Hat Gaming. There was something where Nintendo struck a deal where that could not come out on on the Genesis. So that's where we got Castlevania Bloodlines. Same things with Turtles in Time. That Turtles in Time should have come out on the Genesis, but they had to make Hyperstone Heist to kind of work that in for the Genesis fan base. And it was like, man, Nintendo was doing that all along. So it, it's it's always been there. You know, it's just now that we're older, we're seeing it like, well, dang, this is what was really going on. And as you said, like, the the purple curtain has been pulled back and we're seeing the man behind the the puppeteering, so to speak. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but continue. I just wanted to add that to, for, for context. And it's like... Uh... When the judge calls you out and says, like, this isn't defense of Sony being a marketplace leader. This is supposed to be about anti-competitiveness and protection of consumers. Like, a lot of the FTC's arguments, like, fell by the wayside. Because, each, like, they tried to say, like, well, Elder Scrolls is, like, the equivalent of Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. And... Like, the judge was, like, up on the Elder Scrolls, and she, the judge was like, well, Elder Scrolls is primarily a single-player-based game, so they're not even in the same category. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, it'll be interesting to see the decision, but I do not see this going in the FTC's way at all. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Shinwar, your thoughts on uh, Judge Corley where she was getting getting the data and like Demenzel said, you know, she started to get it and start making, you know, common sense questions. Uh and I'm actually gonna flesh out something that Demenzel I'm pretty sure you're gonna respond to. But, you know, just the common sense. Like there was something that highlighted where she said, Well, Sony is keeping games off of Xbox. Why can't Microsoft tried to survive the same. They, remember that question, Dave, where they, they were asking the FTC, why is it that Sony can do it, but Microsoft cannot, you know? But Shinwar, your thoughts on just, you know, in, in general, and then, you know, Judge Corley actually starting to get it and see, like, hey, they're doing it too. You know, how come Microsoft is being blocked? But your thoughts, just in general, uh, of the case. So I haven't been following it like you guys have, um, but for what I do know, I the judge is a fresh set of eyes 
from the outside looking in, right? So whether it's gaming or the movie industry, whatever. So unethical practices are still unethical practices despite uh, the, the, the medium that they're in. So with, with Sony, you know, the fans may have known, like, Sony, you've been doing some low-down shady stuff for over, what, two decades, probably even longer than that. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, with the judge poking holes in it, um, that's good because now it's like, okay, Sony, you want to, quote, unquote, expose Microsoft. Well, let's talk about your, your deeds, too. It's one of those things where the proverbial was good for the goose isn't good for the gander. Right. And so, you know, Jim, Jim Ryan and Sony want to be um, crying about the situation yet, and you and I talked about this before, mm-hmm. if the shoes were on the other foot, they would have gladly purchased um, Activision mm-hmm. and wouldn't even bat an eye. And nobody else would bat an eye. Right. So, yeah, it's like, and you know, you always use the analogy of someone getting beat up. Beat up. Mm-hmm. And then when they start fighting back, now they're the bully, and then you know they Sony wants to play the victim. So it's it's this thing is good, and I do hope the Activision deal goes through. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this whole thing coming to light is good, so where people can see the stuff behind the proverbial uh, purple curtain, mm. and so we can see what's really going on. Even with the emails that he uh, Jim Ryan is sending to Phil Spencer's like. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. And how can you make such demand? Like, like if you if you were to focus on your company and continue to build it as you guys are the quote unquote market leader, uh, per se, why are you worried about quote unquote the competition? You guys are the industry standard. That, that, matter of fact, here's a good analogy. You don't ever see WWE reference AEW. Right. right. Thank you. Thank you. And so <laughs> just like Microsoft, Microsoft, hey. They're not worried about Sony. You guys do your thing. We're setting standards over here mm-hmm. and, and standardization, and we're doing our own thing. Mm-hmm. But now that this whole deal gone, it's like AEW constantly referencing WWE. Why are you worrying about that? Right, right. Shinmore, bravo. I loved how you put that, you know? And if, and this is, Shinmore wasn't following it, like he said, as detailed as me and Demizzle. Because, you know, for me, I just want to be in the know. But that was the perfect way to break it down. No bias. It's like what it is. Now, I do want to uh, shift gears where, you know, how did we end up here? Right. So last generation, Microsoft and Phil Spencer admitted that the Gen 8 was the worst console generation to lose because the infancy of the digital age, people committing to ecosystems and you know one thing i don't agree with that he said was even if microsoft makes good games it's not going to make people convert you know shout out to project justice he's one of those folks that will convert on 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 a, on a whim oh street fighter's not on this system i'm going to playstation oh street fighter's back on xbox i'm jumping back on xbox if, if you have the games people will you know support your platform right but that generation made it very difficult because now Microsoft fell so far behind after the TV, TV, TV sports debacle and that, you know, horrible showing at that E3, you know, they lost the install base and now they can leverage that. Sony can leverage that to make these deals where, hey, you know what? Why would you put it on Xbox? You're you're, you're not really going to make much and you're spending resources to put support the Xbox one, right? So they just kept falling behind and falling behind and falling behind. And Sony took advantage of the fact that they were firmly positioned as the market leader with no hope, even with the Xbox One X, the more powerful system in that generation uh, Jim Ryan was so arrogant. He said, "We're not worried about that. Even if it's more powerful than our system, uh, the developers aren't going to utilize it because there's guaranteed money with a, a, a vastly instant install base." So that generation went the way it went because of poor mistakes, Don Matrick, so on and so forth. Take a bow because this is echoes of Don Matrick. Now. 
you had Sony continuing the practice. They they, they were locking up timed exclusives. Uh, like for instance, Avengers. There was a part in the court uh, hearing where they said Sony was fearing in the Call of Duty deal, the 10 year deal, that there wouldn't be content parity. How dare Sony make demands of the, the FTC in the court to force Microsoft into content parity when you had Avengers and Spider Man locked to the PlayStation? How is that parity? You have a whole two ecosystems that lost out on Spider-Man because Sony held the character uh, behind a deal. It's it, not only that, there's like, uh, mm -hmm. even with Call of Duty itself, there was content on the latest Call of Duty that was locked behind the PlayStation uh, platform for about a year before it came to the Xbox. So. It, it wasn't it that game mode? Like, they were like, oh, it wasn't all that great. Or, or skins and so on and so forth. There but was, uh, skin, Skins in a game mode. Yeah, so, uh, operators that were uh, exclusive and so on and so forth. Me and Shinwar talked about this. I was like, highly... I'm like, we got Avengers. And then when Spider-Man was actually released, it was like, man, you know, that's a scummy thing to do. Holding that character like that, where it's just, you know, and let me educate some of the, the Sony fans. Sony does not own Spider-Man. They own the movie rights to Spider-Man. But somehow they caked it and did it, it cooked things in a way where they started getting the exclusive game rights to some degree. They, they kind of categorize Spider-Man as some sort of, like, merchandise asset or something. Yeah. So... Now, Shinwar, I remember you were the one that actually explained that to me. So, uh, just to give context, what was that exactly? How did Sony pull that off? Hey, the way they finagled it, Spider-Man falls under, it's like a merchandise deal. Right. And so, where they're able to use him in various mediums, a la the Insomniac games. Mm -hmm. Also, obviously, they already have the, the, the movie rights, right? Mm -hmm. For the, the license to the movies. Um... Oh, but also with that, he was able to appear in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, which was on Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. And uh, But they, they, they finagled it for him to be solely on the PlayStation version of Avengers. So, I mean, that's all Sony has. And, you know, they're going to do whatever they can to, to, to milk it and keep that character on that platform. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's only going to go so far. Right. And, and and Judge Corley started seeing these things. And like Shinwar said, a fresh set of eyes. Somebody that's not in, into gaming, she's like, that doesn't really... How come they can do it, but another company can't? You know? You had Final Fantasy 16. That... That popped up a couple of times during the um, the hearing where Microsoft said Sony is actively engaging in keeping games off of our platform by making these deals to, you know, make it being hard to be Xbox. He said that in the Xcast podcast where it's just, you know, I was telling Shinmar and I'm, I'm big on analogies because my dad was, was like that, where if... A couple of people want to go to college, right? They should have that ability to go. Just because one person can pay for it and somebody has to go through FAFSA, oh, I don't want them having access to this. So somehow you they, they go to somebody and, and mess up their application or block them from getting access to that school. Everybody should have a fair chance to excel, Okay. I was bringing up the Blockbuster. I, I, shout out to Tough North Toys. When I was doing my live stream um, solo, I said, you see, between Blockbuster and Netflix, what Blockbuster failed to do was adapt. And that's where Sony is right now, right? Microsoft is rapidly creating the digital ecosystem and so on and so forth. And Sony it, it didn't really keep up in that. And, and I, I said, failure to plan is planning to fail. And see, see, I have to disagree with uh, that. It's not that Sony didn't uh, keep up. They actually were in the digital like ecosystem first. You took my notes. That that's I was gonna talk about that, but go ahead, go ahead. Uh, the way they did their business model was so bad. They caught 
a lot of backlash for it. It was like it was like a digital version of Blockbuster where you would rent the game for however many days. Oh, that was PlayStation Now, right? Yeah. Yes, okay. And they just caught so much backlash for it. Like, that business model combined with the less than stable connections that didn't offer good, like, controls over the game. Mm -hmm. And this was a purely streaming thing. There was no, you get the game, like, you rent the game, you download it, you play it. That Mm. didn't come until later. Yeah. Like, it just left such a bad taste in Sony's mouth that they just backed off of it completely. Mm -hmm. And then Microsoft came in and was like, okay, this is where Sony messed up. This is how we're going to do our game pass. We're going to allow the people to download the game locally onto, Mm -hmm. we're going to create like a library and then allow membership access to that library and then allow the people to download Whichever games they want from this library, as long as they have... An active membership, membership. right. Right. So, Microsoft wasn't the inventor, they just got the the business model. Yeah, so basically, Sony went Super Saiyan, and then, you know, Gohan goes Super Saiyan 2, refined. Or, Or, you know, I remember Trunks made a good analogy, he's like, Gohan did it right. He increased his power without losing speed. So, if if somebody... You know, after you sees, hey, that didn't work. Let me try something different. Who is the person before to be upset and salty and try to stifle or get in, or get in the way of Microsoft refining what Sony had been in the in in the space first? And I'm glad that that came out in court because they're like Microsoft is this juggernaut and they're pioneering that whole thing. And you know, Sarah Bond even made a good point. It's like, yeah, the streaming isn't you know, as profitable as one thinks, you know, but the service is, is, is solid. And, you know, for Sony to try to get in the way of that, it start this whole circus, you know, because they, 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 they messed up. Like, like, like I was trying to say with the whole blockbuster and Netflix, one of the individuals, uh, I guess the, the, when Netflix was initially going to launch, they went to Blockbuster and said, hey, you know what? We have this idea. You know, they got laughed out of that, you know, proposal. And now look what happened. Look what happened. You know, now Blockbuster's out of business. And then, you know, Netflix, now they have new competitors. Netflix used to be like the juggernaut of streaming stuff. Like, hey, you got Netflix, Netflix. Now you have Paramount. Now you have Amazon, Hulu. So, you know, the list goes on. But you notice Netflix couldn't stay on top forever. And once, remember, Shimwa and I were discussing when Disney Plus became a thing, I was against it. I'm like, man, this is stupid, da, da, da. Now I'm going to have to pay for this and pay for that and so on and so forth. But as the competition grew and other streaming services grew, the con- it, it, it was now a fight for content to fight for your dollar. And deals started coming into play, started EA Play, uh, the, uh, bundles and so on and so forth. And that that was healthy for competition. Initially, I was against it, and then years later, you see, you know what? Maybe, yeah. maybe. Now, mm-hmm. now all these platforms like Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, Amazon have their own original programming, which is great. Mm-hmm. And, and it's know, not overpriced per month. You know what I mean? Yeah, all competing for your dollars. Like I don't have. Paramount Plus because they don't offer what I I want, but I'm not going to argue against them existing because they have stuff on there that people that I know would like. And, and guess what? Guess what? You hit it right on the head. You have a choice. It doesn't have something you don't... It, it doesn't have what you want. You don't have to subscribe to it. And, and, I, and this is kind of a point that the judge also asked the FTC. Mm-hmm. It, because she brought up Netflix and physical media. Mm-hmm. And she was like, well, what we're seeing is literally the evolution of the the digital space. Because when was the last time you actually bought a DVD? <laughs> uh, the, mm, good point. Good point. And, 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 and it, talking about evolution and uh, bringing uh, the next uh, point. It, you know, like I said, this is all b- a big uh, stew of the uh, court 
uh, hearing. But evolution, right? I think somewhere along the line, she said that, you know, FTC is trying to now redefine the parameters of what is competition. So, oh, they didn't count the PC. They didn't count the Switch. Sony and Microsoft are the high end. But Judge Corley wasn't fooled by that because she said, well, if the Switch is selling so well and, you know, they're, you know, outselling the both of these, like, yeah, they are a competitor. I mean, you can't, you know, and, and I think she was even saying to the uh, effect that maybe the Switch is better because you can dock it and take it on the go. Whereas the other systems, you cannot, you know, but overall, it's this, it seems like, you know, with, with evolution, you can't stop evolution. It will always win, you know? And I, and I think, um, Bobby Kotick's, uh, testimony in regards to the Nintendo Switch helped further drive that point home that they are competition mm -hmm. because he even admitted, like, he... When the Switch first came out in 2017, mm -hmm. even though Call of Duty had been on Nintendo platforms prior mm -hmm. to Nintendo Wii and the Wii U, mm -hmm. he vastly underestimated the capabilities of the Switch. Mm -hmm. and led him to decide not to bring Call of Duty to the Switch. I remember that. I remember he that. that. It's a decision that he regrets because be sure that there would have been an audience on the switch right hence why if microsoft uh, gets this deal if the switch hardware wise isn't capable they can still because i remember nintendo was open to having game pass the app on the switch and then maybe they can stream it whereas they can get the full monty without stressing the hardware and with that said it's like you know for the both of you, this really, you know, uh, pulling the curtain back. Now we know when the PS6 is coming out. We know when the next Xbox is coming out. We know how much certain things cost to develop because Last of Us and Horizon Zero Dawn was expensive, which kind of drives the point. I see why Sony doesn't want to do day and date in their PSN service. They need that $70 to recoup you know, the cost that they put out to make these games, you know, and I, 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 it, it never dawned on me like that, but those games were expensive to make. We're talking, I think, 325 mil for one, one of the two. I'm like, golly, you know, so the, that doesn't even include like the marketing. Marketing, yes. So now uh, I remember Judge Corley was saying, you know, OK, talking about that and referencing Call of Duty. She said, if Microsoft were to get it and put it day and date, they're like, what's stopping Sony from putting Call of Duty that they don't make day and date into um, uh, PlayStation Plus Gold? You know? Yeah. Like, she made that excellent point. It's like, wouldn't that force Sony to step their game, game up? Of, right. Yes, yeah, step it up. Mm -hmm. and it's like, literally, because, like, another thing that was referenced was, uh, it's one of my favorite games, uh, MLB The Show. Right, right. Um, a lot of people know that uh, a couple of years ago, MLB, the organization, essentially strong-armed Sony into making MLB The Show for other platforms. Or or they were going to lose the license. I remember that. Mm -hmm. so Sony capitulated, like, yeah, we'll, make, we'll develop the game for other platforms. However... Mm -hmm. won't publish the game on other platforms. Right. So what Major League Baseball did was they effectively created a, a breakout company for the sole purpose of publishing MLB The Show on Xbox. Uh, other platforms, right. Xbox and Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize, like, and they explained this during the trial, how MLB The Show is on Game Pass if it's a Sony title. How it's on Game Pass is because the way Microsoft explained it is that they approach the developers and the publishers mm -hmm. on licensing the games. And since Sony doesn't publish MLB The Show on Xbox, oh, they, I they see. approach Major League Baseball's uh, company that publishes 
MLB The Show on Xbox and negotiate it with them to get MLB The Show on Game Pass. Smart, so, smart move. Power play. Yeah. Power play. Now, uh, I wanted to give the floor back to Shinwar. Now, with this, right, going back to Nintendo as competition, right? I'll have you guys know the only reason why I got a Switch is because of Shinwar, right? And mm-hmm. sh- share that. How is that po- Wait a minute. How is that possible when I got the Switch when Shinwar was already getting Nintendo Switches? Like, what are we talking about? Right. For that game alone. And then when I saw Astro Chain. Oh, yeah, this is pretty cool. So you didn't get it just because of me. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It, 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 it's all Shinwar's fault. And oh my God. so I went hunting for a Switch, but my buddy, he was working at GameStop. He, he doesn't work there no more. I'm not going to say why, but uh, I was able to get a Switch for a deal. Then, you know, I saw that, like, when I got Metroid Dread, me and Shinwar were at Comic-Con um, a few years ago. Where I Remember when I got Metroid Dread? At the, that gaming store, and then it, funny story, I had gave my debit card, but that vendor was from another state, and then they blocked my card, and I had to call while I'm on at the Jacob Javits Center, like, oh yeah, I approved this just so I could get Metroid Dread, and I hadn't touched my PS4, my Xbox for for a, a good minute because I was locked on the Metroid Dread. Then I got Astral Chain. Then I got um, Mario Odyssey. And, you know, even though I'm kind of like Nintendo didn't grow with me, but there are some titles that took me away. And I think the t- statistics are even talking about when certain games came out on the Switch, the logged data time on both um, competing platforms went down. Yeah, Microsoft's so, lawyer brought that up. Right. Uh, so, she, so she was like, yeah, like to say Nintendo Switch is not a competitor is an outright falsehood. Mm-hmm. Due to that is because, like, when certain games come out, like the it's a it's a tangible thing that you can see where player base goes down when these games come out because these games are so engrossing and mm-hmm. they just eight players away for a certain amount of time. Right, right. A.K.A. Shinwar playing uh, Br- uh, Breath of the Wild. And, uh, you know... I, I, did you beat it yet? I've been beating Breath of the Wild. So I'm actually playing Tears of the Kingdom oh. right now. Oh, what? Oh, that's what I meant. I, mean, uh, I was going to make a, make fun of the name, but I'm going to leave that alone. But, uh, wait, how how far... How many hours in are you with that game? Oh, gosh. I haven't even checked. Uh, it better be at least... 20, 30? 30? 20, 30? That's a part-time job. What? I do, I have, and then, like, I'll do, like, a couple missions here and there, and then I'll just be done with it. Because uh, there are a lot of games that came out uh, this year, so it's, like, just splitting my time. Mm-hmm. But with that, folks, Nintendo is, is a competitor. I mean, although not in the same fidelity, in terms of high-end graphics and you know what nintendo has a formula that works for them and they're out in the corner doing their own thing you know and luckily their first party is so substantial and it has nostalgic strings that will keep them afloat even though that they didn't they lost call of duty which is bringing me to my next point that microsoft almost lost call of duty this generation and bobby kodak uh, you know I'm not too much of a fan of this guy, um, considering the culture that was going on. And, you know, a lot of the employees are looking to Microsoft to save them and fix the culture. That's not for this podcast. But, you know, Kodak, I guess he has scales, you know, kind of snakish behavior. And I, I, I understand one thing that he did, though. He brokered that deal to get you know the traditional 70 70 30 revenue share right he goes to microsoft and strong arms them and says hey we're, if we don't renegotiate this because call of duty pulls in a lot of money and you can stand to take a 10 percent cut so 
They go, I believe Sarah Bond was talking about it, where they're like, Call of Duty almost didn't appear on the Xbox. Microsoft could not afford that. Uh, uh, consider how many people left the Xbox because Street Fighter V wasn't on it. Imagine what Call of Duty would have done to the platform. Man, there, there's no recovering from that. No recovering from that. So with that, it's just mm, Kodak, interesting fella. You know, if the deal goes through, he's going to stay on, uh, I think, six to nine months for the transition period and handover. And then everybody will report to Phil Spencer. Right? Here, here's, the, here's the other thing. Um, mm-hmm. They mentioned the statistics like uh, Call of Duty would have hurt, like not being on Xbox would have hurt a lot more than it not being on PlayStation because more, there's a higher percentage of Call of Duty players on Xbox than there are PlayStation. Like something like 72% of all PlayStation users don't have Call of Duty at all. Mm-hmm. Or something like. 60% of all Xbox users don't have Call of Duty. So it would have hurt Microsoft a lot more not having Call of Duty than it would have hurt PlayStation. And, and you know, yeah, this is true. But they were talking about how profitable Call of Duty was on the PlayStation and Call of Duty PlayStation Association. Let me give you guys a little bit of history. Call of Duty was a thing. But if it weren't for the Xbox 360 Call of Duty wouldn't be the juggernaut that it is today. Before, even like, and, and some people will disagree with me on that, but you go back and look in history, look at the documentaries. Call of Duty really got big because of the 360 and the Xbox Live infrastructure back then, right? And it made Call of Duty accessible outside of PC. So more of the casuals got into it, and that's why Call of Duty is where it is, not because of the PlayStation. It was the 360 era that really ushered in that true immersive online gaming. Yeah, so it was, the, uh, it was the Xbox 360 combined with the the first modern warfare game and Xbox Live. Yeah, and, and so I had to say that because a lot of folks, if it weren't you know Call of Duty is doing, so, yeah, it's doing well on the PlayStation because of the faux pas of Generation Eight and everybody migrating a lot of those people that are playing call of duty on the playstation ecosystem were originally on xbox they just needed to get their call of duty fix and they they went elsewhere so that that's just i just need to put that out there but um touching on another point the you know shifting gears to the ftc right i love how uh the judge and, uh, you know, it was literally, I wouldn't say scolding the FTC, but the, she was questioning them in terms of who are you protecting? Are you in the best interest of the consumer or are you in the, uh, protecting Sony's dominant position in the, in, in the game industry space? You know, it, it's just it's baffling to me that, you know, for instance, a good example, when Phil Spencer was getting roasted. And I saw some PlayStation fanboys who were like, yeah, yeah, gotcha moment, gotcha moment. Yeah, yeah, Phil Spencer. This. Listen, Phil Spencer did a fantastic job. Sarah Bond did a fantastic job. So those folks can pipe down. And shout out to Tough Nerd Toys uh, checking out the stream. I, I, I need you on the next show, brother. We'll, we'll, we'll work that out. But you got these folks, you know, uh, the FTC working in favor of Sony to keep them in, on the top, right? And, you know, now we're trying to un to unpack and say, hey, you know what? It should be about the consumer, not about Sony. And giving people choice, you know? At, at the end of the day, like, let let's make a good example. Shinwar, remember you and I were discussing this where, you know, you got games at $70 price point. I'm kind of mad at Microsoft for fo following suit with Sony with their first party now going to $70. I think that's kind of like a shady way of forcing people to say, hey, Game Pass is, a, you know, looking better and better every day with the cost of games going up. But on the Sony platform, they don't do day and date. They, they, gave, they stated their reason. But let me ask you this, Shinwa, in a scenario. If 
you know, one day our live gold is no longer a thing and we're in Game Pass, right? Paying 10 or $15 a month versus paying $70 up front, you know, down the line, what do you think is a better value? Like, would it hurt to do $10 a month or can you take that blow? Mm hmm. Here's the thing, I'm very specific on my game, so I don't have a problem paying the 70. Okay. Um, so with Game Pass, not all the titles up there I'm going to play. Right. Um, and in hindsight, yeah, uh, the $10 is, you know, $10 a month or whatever the case may be. Actually, Ultimate, I believe, is fourteen ninety nine. Yeah. Um, but, but for me, since I'm doing very little, I won't say little, but... I'm very uh, specific on the games I play, so I don't have a I don't have a problem buying them individually. Mm -hmm. and on top of, I like physical discs as well, so you have to take that into a factor. Mm -hmm. but for me personally, I, I will probably uh, not use Game Pass, mm -hmm. um, and I'll just pay the seventy for the game. Mm -hmm. um, but I understand that there are people out there that you know they do like that model, and absolutely go for it. If, Microsoft is offering that service, mm -hmm. and if a person chooses, because now you know we're we're it's all about choice, right? So go for it, and if you choose not to, then that's perfectly fine, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. so and Microsoft offers you the option and the choice and what you want to do. You said it again, choice, because George George, oh, I'll give you a second, Dave. Judge Corley said. When you look at, like, Shinmar, you know, gave a specific reason why, hey, you know what, Game Pass is not for me. He can choose not to use it. If Game Pass, like Doc Dark, 1985, there's level to this. I love his show, by the way. Um, he is a very avid advocate for Game Pass, right? So he can choose to use Game Pass. With this deal, it gives people choice. Why are you taking away people's choice? You know, but Demizel, you were gonna say something. I didn't mean to. I'm I'm kind of in a hybrid situation mm -hmm. because with the major releases like your Forzas and your 2Ks and stuff like that, I'll actually go out and buy the game. Yeah, uh, you do know, you do know uh, what I, I was gonna mention. You can still, let's say, a game is on Game Pass, right? Oh yeah, and and, know, and it's on rotation, and it's gonna come off, right? If you want to yeah. continue to use that game, you can still purchase it at a uh, steep discount. Steep discount because it was on Game Pass. So, yeah, but I, I, I also like physical media to a degree. Mm -hmm. I also have Game Pass because I'm in that box of like there are games on there that I would never play otherwise or pay for, right? Right. Yeah. And I discovered a lot of great games that I enjoy because of Game Pass, and it's like. Like, mm -hmm. There's a game on there called The Descenders, and it's literally like a mountain biking game. And I know in my heart of hearts that I would have not paid 40 bucks for this game at retail. I heard about that game, too. Oh, you see? That's what I mean. There's some benefits to Game Pass. You know what I mean? It's like, here's the thing. Like, uh, it's obviously a tale of two companies. You have a tale of one company who business model is like hey we want the console industry to stay the same we want that money up front yeah 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 we don't want much deviation from that and mm. then we have another company where it's like okay the console itself isn't our we're gonna have that be our loss leader that's not gonna be our main focus we just want people to play games in our ecosystem we don't care where you're playing we just want you playing in our ecosystem mm -hmm. right right okay so it's, like, it's it's not hurting competition because you literally have two different business models you have a choice now of hey do you want to stick in a traditional platform ecosystem or do you want to migrate over to it a platform that is mostly digital distribution because mm -hmm. uh, game pass is effectively like netflix yeah that, that's the netflix of gaming as everybody was but you know for sony pulling this stunt 
and, 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 you know, Jim Ryan going all over the world to try to stifle Game Pass. Good example. And Tough Nerd Toys can confirm this, too. I think we had a chat about it where Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil Village, right? Sony aggressively blocked that. They went to Capcom and said, no, don't put this on Game Pass, da, da, da. You know, speaking ill or whatever. I, I, that was a, a known thing. IGN and a lot of people were covering that. And I was like, really? Like, Sony is that threatened by Game Pass that they had to go and block Resident Evil Village from being on Game Pass? And, and I think that is something that regulators should look into, finally. Yes, well... I, I, they, should, they should stop companies from being able to pay, like, content creators to not put something on another... Yeah. Yeah, because Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 16, uh, that should not be a console exclusive. As a third party, Square Develop, Sony does not own it unless, you know, I, I want to see what contracts are drawn up. That should have been present in court. You know what it I mean? Was. It was. So, it was. so for Sony to do that, right? What I, I it's if Microsoft were to make Call of Duty console exclusive, right? And I'm gonna bring another point into this, but if they were to do that and make it console exclusive, they would be within their rights to do so because Sony is going for the throat. They're bloodthirsty, you know. Now Matt Booty messed up and said, "Well, we're gonna spend Sony out of business," but this is the Microsoft that Amazing Lucas, Red Dragon, Dreamcast guy, all these guys, MBG. Well, I want Microsoft to fight and compete. Now they're fighting, and and I said, Dave, me and you said this years ago when we were active. We're like, if Microsoft starts using their wallet, Sony cannot keep up because they're not deep enough. Microsoft can 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 go and, and usurp a lot of these deals, but I think Phil Spencer made a good point. If we were to make Call of Duty exclusive to the Xbox platform, it would cause irreparable damage to their reputation. But how come Microsoft has to walk a tightrope or walk on thin ice for what Sony has been doing? It doesn't make sense to me. It, it doesn't, but... Microsoft also has a history in uh, anti-competitiveness because years ago, Microsoft was literally forced to break up its companies. I know, I know. So they do have a history. So it's not like Microsoft has been like on the up and up all day, every day. And you know what? In response to that, yes, they do have it, the, the, the history. But remember, changing of the guards, there was a lot of people running things at Microsoft back then that were no different than Sony. You know what I mean? Like, they were literally the OS dominator. If you look up the uh, some of the documentaries on, the, you know, how the Xbox came to be and so on and so forth, they touch on, you know, the infancy of Windows and so on and so forth. And it's like, man, Microsoft literally what this came into virgin territory and you literally can still function like you got linux you got you know uh mac os but microsoft is the dominant player for in, in os space you're like 90 98 of the pcs have some form of windows on it yeah. there, there's no way around that okay got it that's that's, that's not only private systems that's also government around the world is right 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 you know what? I, yeah so i i get it you know verizon or bell atlantic had had they you know you got to protect people got it right but when it comes to this microsoft being a subsidiary of microsoft or, or running independently right if right. if they're trying to survive and, and stay competitive and the resources yeah. keep drying up and drying up and drying up it has to come to a point like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. even the 12 congress members who have um leaned on the japanese ftc to see they're so slanted in japan how playstation is just like the dominator but also playstation 
is given that pathway here in the United States. And I'm not trying to be a patriot or anything, but Microsoft is getting destroyed in Japan because a lot of titles don't pop up. The 360 was Microsoft's strongest outing in Japan. Why? You had games like Blue Dragon, Lost Odyssey, a lot of Japanese developed games. And coming off of that runoff relationship with Sega and the Dreamcast, you know, a lot of folks that had you know, ties to Sega or, or loyalty to Sega kind of, you know, uh, uh, migrated to Xbox, right? So when they started losing that, then you started losing Japan. And Sony saw this, and then they continued with that scummy practice. And when Sony, and, and I think Judge Corley really caught this, when you look at when Sony's taking things away from the Xbox platform, stop thinking Xbox. You're taking it away from a group of players who have would have otherwise played the game. Final Fantasy 16. I I really want that game. Right now, I don't have a PS5. But you can get one. That's I, about choice, right? Yeah, yeah. You I, choose not to get it. I, I, I have a PS4. I wish they should have had it on PS4, but it is what it is. Oh wow. That's about well, hold on. <laughs> Never mind. But with, with with that, I could, you know, pull from emergency funds and go get a PS5 or whatever. What? 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 Oh, oh wow. Th th this is my line. What the heck? Oh, hold on. But, but with that, my daily driver is my Xbox. You know, I want, I choose to want to play it on the Xbox. So, Look, Street Fighter 5, right? I got Street Fighter 6 on Xbox. That's where I prefer to play it, right? That's my choice. But because I got forced into the whole Steam side of things and I didn't want to pay another, you know, service, it's like Sony took away choice. And I think at the, the, the bare bones... Sony has a bad habit of removing that. You have to play it on our PlayStation or you don't play it at all. Right, third party stuff that they're feeling entitled to, and I don't. I, I think now, finally, what I've been saying, Shinwa, even you know, certain individuals not in the Discord anymore used to say, Oh, yeah, you're just hating on Sony, and this and that. I'm like, with the exception of Demizel, who knew everything that was exposed in this hearing is what I've been saying for years. And I'm not going to be an I told you so. But that's what has been going on for the longest. And why is Sony on top? Because of these practices. They can keep games off of rival platforms so that folks can have it in their head. You can only... Sony's uh, the best, this, that, and the third because they're taking game uh, revenue from games like Minecraft where Sony gets a cut of the the proceeds use that money to go and broker those deals which is messed up and things like that it's like microsoft is literally feeding the enemy to poison them back that's why sometimes microsoft shouldn't be such pacifists and pull some of those games so sony wouldn't have the money to do stuff like this you know sometimes you can't be nice and and that's where you know aside from microsoft aids gen's issues but being too nice is going to get you messed up. You know what I mean? Now, Microsoft is probably fighting more aggressively than at any time in the 360 era. Because that was a power move to initiate this whole deal. But I guess in closing, I don't want it to go too long. Where do you guys think we're going to be? Like, let's have a scenario for the both of you. Let's say in one scenario, Microsoft gets the deal. Where do you see us five years from now? And then scenario B, the deal gets blocked because I still think the cloud might be something that just Corley could block it for or approve the injunction, you know? But where do you see us five years from now, starting with Shinwa, if Microsoft gets the deal, what kind of future are we looking at? If they don't get the deal... What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the way they put it is pretty much if they don't get this deal, they might be done for. Which I highly doubt. You know, they, they have other studios, but I want to see games from those other studios. 
Okay. And if they do get the deal, hey, they just continue to force to their roster, and you know, they got Call of Duty, and you know, other games will come out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it it can be a win win. Mm-hmm. It can be a win lose. I don't think it'll be entirely a lose lose situation for them, to, but. In, in in reverse, like with Sony, they make it seem like if it if if it takes away from Sony, then Sony's just in a lose lose situation. Mm-hmm. When when clearly Jim Ryan was like, I don't care about Call of Duty. He just doesn't want to go through. So you'll be perfectly fine. First of all, uh-huh. you guys will be perfectly fine. But back to Microsoft, um, I, I I I just want Microsoft to continue putting out quality games. Games that we had, like when Half Life Rush got announced, that was completely out of left field. Nobody expected it mm-hmm. to be on an Xbox console, and and I think Microsoft really needs titles, not not like that, but I'm saying like games that you do not expect to be, see on the Microsoft right. console. Yeah, oh, Hi yeah. Hi Fi Rush is still in my uh, conversation for Game of the Year. It might not win, but I think that. You know, it, it's gonna be nominated for sure. But all right, thank you, thank you, Shinwa, for that. Dave, in closing, um, your thoughts five years from now, a scenario where ABK gets absorbed by Microsoft. Where do we? What type of future do we see? And then scenario B, they don't get the deal. Uh, and w- what are Microsoft's options? Like, wh- where do they go from here? If they get the deal, like five years from now, I see like. The Call of Duty games, as well as the rest of the Activision, Blizzard, and King uh, roster being like the main, one of the main pillars of Game Pass. Because like five years from now, we'll be in preparing for a new console generation launch. Mm, good point. And I see that as... I think five years from now is when we'll see the split between Microsoft and Sony in terms of business model. Because I don't think Sony is going to hang on to the traditional console uh, money up front business model mm-hmm. much longer, but I don't see them going the way of Game Pass either. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, that's where I, I see it going. If they don't get uh, the deal, if it's the injunction, and by all indicators, Microsoft has said if the injunction is granted, they'll just drop the deal. Yeah. Dollar penalty. It's not like a lose lose situation for Microsoft, but it'll make acquiring games a lot harder. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, it, but what this has done is exposed a lot of predatory practices by Sony and Microsoft in terms of content gathering and keeping content off of other platforms. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll see less of that. Or if it does happen, you'll see a lot of backlash from regulators. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, that's where I see that happening if uh, the deal doesn't go through. All right. And then uh, to kind of wrap things up before we do uh, out- outro, um, five years from now, what I see happening, Xbox starts to level the playing field. Um, I think Shinwar had mentioned with the emails going back between Sony, uh, Sony head and uh, Xbox head. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention during those emails, it seemed that, you know, Jim Ryan and, and the folks at Sony wanted to, we're going to fall back if they would allow Bethesda games or certain Bethesda games back on the PlayStation, kind of try to make a deal, levy the deal, right? A art of the deal, right? I think it was rather smart, but you know, the 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 terms that they were agreeing to, Phil Spencer was like, no, no, respectfully. They were literally, yeah, that was just disrespectful as hell. It was like, not only do we want these games on PlayStation platforms, you can't put them on your own service. The the the, the wow, uh, uh, bold, 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 bold. 
So, hey, respectfully, they declined. That, that was awesome. Hunter Biden and shit, where you go into the crack dealer's house. <laughs> wow. Will and wait his own <laughs> What the? You know what? Let's not even go there. Oh, my goodness. But I, I, I see in five years that Microsoft, like, you'll see ads change. You'll see uh, more Xbox ads on TV. You'll start seeing, oh, just like the 360 era. You'll see, you know, like WWE commercials again, Super Bowl commercials again. You know, Microsoft has been kind of down and out, you know, but they've still been fighting. And, you know, you're going to see more users. You're going to see a spike in Game Pass because a lot of old uh, IPs that lay dormant within Activision. Same thing with Bethesda uh, titles. The old dormant IPs, you're going to see them being brought to the forefront. It's going to create a whole new library of content. So I see Game Pass growing in the next five years. If the deal gets blocked, and this is from my Sony ponies out there, be careful what you ask for. Because Microsoft was about to spend $69 billion, $70 billion, let's round up, right? If they lose three billion, which is kind of messed up because ABK or Activision went to Microsoft for the deal, how is it you're gonna go to somebody say we want you to acquire us, and then the deal uh, breaks down, and then the person that got approached has to pay? That that's messed up. Like that's why I see it's a good thing that Microsoft fought this because I'd be damned if I was in Microsoft's position where hey, but you came to me and I gotta pay. It's almost like, you know, they should have signed a prenup or something. Like, that's crazy. You know, but if the deal gets blocked, be careful what you ask for, Sony Ponies, because that's money that Microsoft can go and do power plays and pull up studios, your beloved studios, because money talks and everybody has a price. Believe me when I tell you. Hey, hey, that's that's what I was thinking about too. <laughs> what, what the heck? Oh my goodness! Be careful what you ask for because now that's loose funds that they can go and do the predatory stuff and keep those games off of PlayStation. I think that I, me and Shinwa were even talking about. It. It's like just sign the deal, sign the ten-year deal, and it'll give them enough time to bring back Killzone. And, and, and have Bungie service it and make it a competitor to Call of Duty, to Halo, to um, Medal of Honor, and all these other first-person shooters. I, 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 that's, all, that's, that's all I got. What, what, you, what, what are you going to say, Dave? As a caveat, I'm actually surprised that those games didn't come up during this as, like, potential, like, fillers. Like, oh, if... Uh, I'm surprised Microsoft's lawyers like, well, if we actually did take away Call of Duty, Sony does have its own franchises to fill that void with. They do have Killzone, they do have Man, they do have... I remember that. Oh, man, you're jogging my memory. Yeah, right, right, they do. They do have uh, Fall, uh, Resistance Fall of Man, so it's not like Sony does not have these types of games at their disposal that they can't develop. They do have the ability to develop these IPs again. But Dave, they're lazy. They're lazy. They're laying back. It's just that their focus now has been the third person. Over the shoulder. Right, right. And their God of Wars and their Last of Us, which are great franchises. Don't get me wrong. Like God of War, fantastic. Beautiful. Last of Us. That, that that's for we're gonna talk about that offline. I, I've been playing other games. Ever, oh wow, he calling out, uh, call me out on the show. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, my PS4. I'm a. Hey, I, I I don't even have the pro. I just have the base PS4. I got from. Uh, uh, Afghanistan when I was deployed. So, man, I had this oh, thing a long they're time. Not, they're not making any games. Why don't you just slow it? I, don't, I had to talk to you offline. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, man, he, he tried to put the juggernaut on blast. Oh, oh no, he got in my head, Charles. What? But with that, um, you know, hopefully this was an entertaining overview. 
like I said, we didn't get too much into the weeds. Just some highlights here and there. Uh, yeah, I thank my my brothers Shinwar and Demizel for you know coming together, the Triforce baby, the, doing our thing with the show. Uh, make sure you support their platforms, uh, Geeking Out Official and uh, Free Play Mode. Uh, I know he was doing some uh, playthroughs here and there. So also shout out to Toughner Toys. Um, make sure you check out Danae. He was doing some unboxings on, on some cool action figures, you know, from Masters of the Universe, uh, G.I. Joe, all that good stuff. I mean, he, he had some cool content, so make sure you check him out. But I'm going to give these guys the floor to plug their channels, and then we're going to wrap up. But um, geeking out, how can they find you? In you know comics, comic comics, do your thing. Uh, you can find me on YouTube uh, at Shit Is War, uh, reviewing comics, games, toys, and tech. And uh, you can follow me on Geeking Out, Geek underscore in underscore out on uh, Instagram. Awesome, awesome. All right, free play mode. You got the floor. Um, you can find me on YouTube, uh, free play mode, all all one word. Um, doing gameplay uh, reviews as well as as well as on Facebook, uh, free play mode on Facebook. Uh, if you're a member of the New Gaming Order channel, it's easy to find me on there because I'm linked as one of the affiliates on that page. All right, all right. You know what? Thank you guys. I wanted to do this yesterday, but like timing, but. Things happen when they're supposed to happen. And this was an excellent show. Thank you guys for supporting. If you guys ever are running anything like this, you know, I'll always support you guys. And again, make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. The man, the myth, the juggernaut, hitting you with the pimp smack, canceling to our head crush. And we're going to see you on the next one. Thank y'all for watching. And peace. Let me do this outro, and we're done. All right, all right, all right.